I became an architect um, after I spent a year as a development learner in Bangladesh and somehow it was always my passion doing something with development but also I wanted to do something, you know, creating something with creativity. And for me, architecture is really a powerful tool to improve lives. You have the, the resource, I mean, whatever you build ends up somewhere, so you have this enormous responsibility in terms of resources. And then also you can shape really the environment uh, or the, the, the social environment. What's fascinating for me is that um, the choice of a building technology or a material is defining who is getting the money. So if I'm building, for example, uh, this building with earth, <laughs> there would be a lot of people craftsmen getting the profit. If it's you know done in cement, it's a few companies who get the profit. And for me, this is a very important thing. You know, I, I really want want to um, use architecture in a way that it can be a catalyst for development. I started with a school, a small school in a remote Bangladeshi village, and. Uh, projects followed there, another school, houses for the farmers there, and I'm also doing um, a museum in China now as well with Ramped Earth and three hostels in China, youth hostels, and I'm also doing some structures in Austria. And um, it's always about earth and using local materials, mainly earth, but also bamboo, timber, and textiles. I, I like textiles a lot, especially since I'm working in Bangladesh with the women there, I see that there's also a large field. Um, where you can, can really create a change. I think it doesn't make a change if, if I built here in, in Austria or Germany or, or in Bangladesh because it's always, you know, understanding a place, understanding the resources of a place and trying to make the best out of it and, and trying to not take more um, than absolutely needed, not get greedy in a way and also bring out the authenticity of a place. For example, with the earth, it's everywhere on this planet, it's different. And then uh, with this vulnerability of this material and towards the climate, when you have these two parameters, the local materials and the local climate, you create automatically something very unique. Usually I find my inspirations in a direct surrounding and then trying to do it a bit different. For example, in, in, in Zimbabwe, when, when I did this, um, kind of beehives for, for, for the children, for the kindergarten. I saw this beautiful roof structure, so I just took it as the entire entire building and then a nose coming out, which is then the snuggling area and then some colorful windows poking through the, the grass. So it's, it's, but taking also the patterns from the clothes. So that's how I'm kind of collecting these inspirations. I would love to to build a skyscraper in the middle of Manhattan or really in a dense urban space just to prove that these materials are not just something from the past but you can it's a question of, of, of the architecture of the architectural language to make an old material modern and this is what I would like to prove in the future.